Hey guys, it's Chris Mosier. It is soon to be voting time, and uh, I think right now is a perfect time to uh, bring into the conversation Travis County Clerk Dana De Beauvoir, whose name I love saying. I said it. Did I say it right? Perfectly. Thank you, Dana, Dana De Beauvoir. It's got to kind of roll like that, and uh, uh, and and uh, 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 she knows everything there is to know about how voting is going to go down in Travis County for the November election. Uh, important deadlines coming up in just the next few days, registration deadlines. I guess let's start there. The, the first thing people should be making sure of right now is that they're registered properly. That's right. October 5th is the deadline for that. <clears throat> and I would suggest, again, don't wait till the last minute. Get it done early uh, so that everybody has time to do all the processing. We do have a lot of folks participating in this election this time. Right, right. And, uh, and we've got an extra amount of time. Uh, thanks to the governor, to vote early this year. How much more time than normal do we have this year? It's six, I believe it's six days longer. It's the longest we've ever had. So this is really great news. Um, okay. October 13th is when which we is, start early voting. Which is eight days past that registration deadline. So it's all looming. It's all coming up real soon. Right now. Uh, <laughs> Please absolutely. check today. Now, I think, you know, one thing that I think has been a national conversation is mail-in voting. Uh, who ought to be able to do it? Uh, how quickly you need to do it? What are the possible ramif- ramifications of a lot of people more so than doing it? Questions about the efficacy of the U.S. Postal Service right now. Uh, I have gotten into a conversation with people that I normally agree with uh, in which I've decided I'm, I'm just going to show up. I'm just going to be there. I'm going to mask up. I'm going to do whatever it takes to feel reasonably safe. I voted in person in the last uh, uh, election just a few weeks back, and that was, you know, it went fine and seemed to be as safe as it could possibly be. Hey, you felt safe. Right. And so now I've, but I've received a counter argument again from folks that I normally uh, agree with that I shouldn't be discouraging people from uh, using mail in voting before a uh, risk that they might not vote at all. And so I want you, that's a big reason that we've invited you to talk is what is your view of mail-in voting? How should it go? What are the risks, if there are any? What do you think about it all? Right. Well, in the first place, Texas does not make voting easy. So telling people you shouldn't use the two main ways people vote, which is by mail and in person, uh, you know, denigrating or, or, you know, not supporting either of those two methods only cuts off people's only way to vote. Right. So really, we don't want to do that. Right. Um, there are some things, some extra steps that we have taken to make by mail voting safer. We want everybody to come out and vote either way. But in Travis County, we've set up um, as of October 1st. So before early voting begins, as of October 1st, you will be able to in two places in Travis County a place downtown and a place out at the airport boulevard north from Travis County campus. Oh, live video. It's live video. Keep going. You're good. <laughs> the, um, the idea is, is that we want to make it easier on the post office because they have suffered uh, from the actions that have been taken against them. Right. So what we want to do is we want to say you can, according to current state law, bring your ballot back Um, and hand deliver it to the business office of the county clerk. And to do that, to do that, we have set up three parking garages across the street from the county courthouse so that you can drive up in your car, show ID, sign a signature roster, and then put your by mail ballot, sealed, marked, everything into the ballot box. Okay. Okay. We'll be operating that starting October 1st, all the way through till the end of election day. So people who are like you concerned about the post office and not wanting to overwhelm them either. Or if you're one of those folks that didn't get it done timely and you're worried about now it's too late. This is for you. This is drive through hand delivery and it should, it should take some of the pressure off the post office and it also should help folks who are worried that they're, they're not being timely. Right. And that that's my, you know, just knowing myself and the way I live my life, which, which is just about everything at the very last second. Uh, I know that a lot of folks, you know, otherwise well-meaning are likely to just because we're human beings end up waiting until it's almost too late. And then, you know, the worry for me is the, the drama that we're likely to see 
uh, if there are enough ballots out there, you know, in the buffer in the mail system to possibly sway the results of the election. That's what scares me. And that's that's been my my reason for saying, hey, just show up if you can. But what what, what you're saying is you can do both. Yes, I really do think you can. Now, you, now this is not drive through voting. Right. You can't bring anyone else's sealed by mail ballot with you. You can only take your own. That's important. You can put people in the car with you and they can have their ballot, but it's you know, the voter is just one voter, one ballot. Um, but it's going to make it a lot easier on everybody, I think. Uh, we will start out operating that drive through hand delivery uh, October 1st from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. And, and when early voting starts, we will be able to expand the hours to the early vo- voting hours of 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And okay. yes, we plan to operate continuously all 31 days um, uh, in October and then through Election Day. Okay. Let's talk about briefly uh, the process of uh, voting the old-fashioned way, which, again, is just showing up and doing it. Uh, there are a lot of our normal places where people have gotten used to voting for years that are no longer hosting uh, voting locations. Uh, tell us about, you know, those primary differences. I know that schools in particular, you know, obviously due to the, uh, to the pandemic are no longer places you want to hold pe- a lot of people rifling through there. Talk about that, about the, the change in that landscape, would you please? Okay. Uh, we do have a lot of new polling places for voters. So we want to make sure that voters understand, double check it before you go out the door. Make a plan to vote. Decide where you're going to vote. Figure out who all your candidates are. It is a long ballot. So take care of yourself and get this done early. Now, the good news about these polling places is we have a new relationship with at least Austin Independent School District. They are going to be declaring uh, Election Day an in-service holiday for teachers. So we will be able to use the schools, and this is a huge help because we were having a really hard time finding enough Election Day vote centers to cover the entire territory of Travis County. Um, Even though we were being creative, voters were going to find that we were voting in hotel ballrooms, (laughs) in uh, empty buildings uh, that have, uh, you know, huge lobbies. I mean, we've got some wonderful places, but they're brand new and voters are not accustomed to them yet. And I think the one thing we want to make clear is for those who did not vote in July, the, the really big change is there's no grocery stores right now. Right, right. You can't vote in grocery stores. So do double check it. And we have a, a tool for voters that's called Wait Times. And okay. it's on votetravis.com. Right, we've seen that. And it will tell you, uh, according to a little traffic icon, a red, a yellow, or a green traffic signal, whether there's a long line or no line at any of these 200 vote centers on Election Day. And we have 35 early voting locations, five of which are mega centers, and four for walk-in voting, in-person voting. We're also going to offer extra hours on the last three days of early voting. So we're trying to find every way we can to deal with this very human characteristic of procrastination. Yeah. We know it's going to happen, but yeah. we're trying to warn voters, don't do this to yourself. We have <laughs> lots of resources in the field. You know, we have places that go wanting voters because everybody tends to kind of pile on at the last minute. You don't right. have to be in a line. Uh, we've talked early in this cycle, I guess, within the last couple of months about uh, uh, folks, especially younger folks, uh, making themselves available to be poll workers. Uh, because we've traditionally, at least in Travis County, in my experience here in central Austin, a lot of the folks who, you know, you see every time you go vote are folks that tend to be a little bit older who've been doing this you know, very important gig for a long, long time. Uh, those people obviously are in more hazard with that gig now. Are, is there a need for poll workers? Is that still something you guys are emphasizing? or And how does that work if somebody was interested? Right. We do have a lot of new people who started with this for the July runoff election and are going to stay with this for November. So there's lots of new young folks out there that are trained and are eager to help. We are thrilled with them. The League of Women Voters has been helping us find, right. you know, new, fresh people who can come in. And yes, we, we want to take care of the folks who might be vulnerable to in-person exposure. Um the, the idea, though, is if you just go to votetravis.com, there are lots of different jobs 
uh, and we invite people to go to votetravis.com and look it up um, because you may want to work inside the county clerk's office processing by mail uh, votes, ballots. Yep. You may That's want to be work huge. in person. You may just want to work election day. There's lots of different jobs, and we want you to, to go look, sign up for it, and welcome to the team. Very, very cool. Uh, anything else? Is there any other topic that you guys are trying to get out there that, that I haven't asked you about? Yes. Call us right away uh, for um, if you want to work. We, we are actively recruiting people right now. We've almost finished with our full recruiting for Election Day, but we still need some more people. And okay. we've almost finished finding all of the 200 vote centers we're going to need on Election Day. If you have an idea for a vote center place, uh, call us and tell us about that, too. And the best way to call us is to call 238-VOTE. 238 vote. Very good. Is there any way that we could possibly vote at DKR? I would like to cast my vote like right there on the 50 yard line on the big long one. <laughs> Wouldn't is I that, love that? Is that possible? Well, well, we already are on in two places on the campus. Okay. So I don't, th- I don't think we're going to need it over there. UT is coming. That's good. We don't have enough. Yeah. But, um, I mean, we, we're just not a place where there's a bunch of um, sports arenas. Williamson oh. County's got a great one. Yep, yep, yep. Very good. Dana DeBouvois, Travis County Clerk, as always, wonderful to see you. And uh, please keep us updated on anything new or anything we can do for you. Absolutely, Chris, and thanks so much.